hey, we're starting a thing here and I never know how to start video, so moving on. Uh, what we're gonna be doing here is a uh, hopefully long running uh, Harry Potter podcast style thing. Uh, basically, uh, me and Autumn are going to be just kind of revisiting the book series and then probably the movies and extended media um, afterwards, yep. all that good stuff. And um, it's something that we've been thinking about doing for a while and because I have no sense of professionalism, uh, there is not really much of a format figured out yet. We're hopefully going to kind of, you know, work that out as we go. But uh, well, in the meantime, must have really done a podcast before anyway. Yes. So. <clears throat> but in the meantime, at least, we're just going to be calling this uh, wizard kid uh, <laughs> named mainly after the uh, series of Let's Watches that I did uh, a few years ago that I think are mostly not available now. But... Um, yeah, it's pretty much just going to be, you know, kind of going chapter by chapter through the books, talking about them, talking about things that are tangentially related to them, and uh, making a bunch of stupid observations along the way. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we've uh, we've both read the first chapter and, and uh, written some notes on it. Um, I, I've written about, far too many notes. <laughs> Josh has written about three times as many as I have. Yes. Um, we should probably <laughs> give a basic introduction of uh, who we are. Yeah, probably. And our history with um, the book series. Yeah, so I have to imagine that uh, most people who are going to be watching this are already aware of my YouTube channel. In the event that somehow people end up finding this that don't know about it, then you don't really need to know too much about us. But uh, I'm Josh, or Big Dip, but my normal, my actual name is fine. Um, I'm Autumn. And uh, that's... Yeah, that's all you need to know. Good. Okay. No, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. But yeah, as far, as far as, like, you know, relation to the series and everything... Um, I'm I'm 32, so it's like you know when the first book came out, that was I think like 1997 or something, um, 98 in the U.S. I don't remember exactly. Um, point is, I was I was in like third or fourth grade. Um, I remember our teacher read the first chapter to the class and then didn't continue, and yet there was somebody in the class who insisted that she read out the entire thing, which absolutely did not <laughs> happen. Um, that I mostly forgot about it. The next year, we uh, had to put on a play for the book, uh, which was hilariously bad. And then I want to say, what's that? Who did you play? Oh, uh, oh, I was uh, I was Voldemort, um, which oh. meant that uh, I was um, I was attached to the back of somebody else's head, and so my uh, <laughs> my plan for that was just to you know have like a little mask attached to their head, and I would like you know kind of do the voice from like under a table or something uh -huh. but the teacher insisted that we stand back to back and it was really fucking bad oh um my God. <laughs> so yeah so that happened and then i think the year after that was when we finally started uh like the teacher actually was reading through all the books and i mostly didn't really pay attention to them because i was a dumb kid but then i ended up getting into the series on my own anyway and uh here i am all these years later still overly obsessed with it and, How uh, many times have you reread the series, or read read the series? It's anymore? really hard for me to say. Um, I would. You've I read would, the earlier ones more than the later ones, right? Yes, because every time that a new book would come out, I would definitely reread all of them. But uh, I would also probably just reread them anyway. So the one I've led, I've read the least is Deathly Hollows, and I'd say I've probably gone through that one about four times. Okay. Um, and I've seen. Most of the movies a bunch of times. The last couple, not as much. I see. But um, okay. I guess you can go ahead and say your bit then. Sure. Uh, so I'm British. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're which, actually uh, Russian. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's false. Anyway, I um, the books obviously started being published before I was born because I'm uh, 22. God, I was gonna say 21 there. Uh, <laughs> already forgetting my age. Um. I I think I've watched the movies first, uh, but I was also like a really 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 little kid, and didn't, you know you don't you don't really pay attention slash process what you're really seeing. Right. But I liked them anyway, apparently, and I was probably only like three or four when I got like a DVD set of the first three movies, um, and I, I watched those movies over and over, and then I got into the books because I learned how to read from a pretty early age, and. I remember being in year two, which is when I would have been, like, seven, and there were kids around me that were, you know, reading, like, kids' books, basically, like, simple stuff, and I was 
in the corner of the room reading or order of the phoenix <laughs> um but uh which i have to yeah, imagine wasn't all that uncommon because i mean no but i mean i think I, I i think i was the only person in the class that could read at that level at that time hmm. um but yeah i have i have uh i've also read the early ones more than the later ones i've read deathly hallows twice but the most recent time was actually about 10 years ago when i was 12 so i um Already in reading this first chapter, uh, have uh, with a fresh it's set a of different, eyes. It's a different experience reading stuff as an adult. Like, there's just, you know, I don't. There's basic. I don't remember basically any details um, other than like plot points and anything that any smaller things. I would only remember if someone else has mentioned them uh, before. So yeah. you know, I know about certain little Easter eggs and interesting details that people have brought up, but I certainly do not remember them from my reading of the books <laughs> yeah so we're gonna have pretty drastically dis different uh experiences with this then because i always kind of make it a like i've more or less been in the fandom kind of consistently okay. since the beginning um like it's not something where i am constantly you know like reading in-depth stuff about it over and over again but uh like I'll, I'll I look at like the subreddit and like I've looked at other message boards here and there and I've listened to the uh, Potterless pod podcast with Mike Schubert and I read uh, the Mark reads Harry Potter which was a blog from a while ago. Um, I like seeing other people's perspectives on it and just reading other people's thoughts on it. Um, so I know like pretty much all the nitty gritty stuff, <laughs> um, and so I'm going to be talking about a lot of it. Yeah, I've consumed a lot of, um, not even a lot, sorry, I've consumed some analytical content, but probably not to the same level that you have. Uh, and as for, like, supplementary stuff, like the games and the movies and stuff, I've seen all the movies a couple times, I've played a few of the games. We'll be going more into that in, like, uh, later things. Um, yeah. I but... think our plan is to do all of the books, then all of the movies, and then get into some other stuff after that, right? I think so, yeah. Because I have basically no experience with the games other than the little bit that you had me go through of the Chamber <laughs> of Secrets one and the like beginning yep. of Lego Harry Potter. Um, okay. Don't plan on going through like every single one of them, but uh, we'll kind of see how that goes when we get there, I guess, if, if we're burnt out. Sure. <clears throat> so, uh, one thing I also want to touch on here, um, not to be overly aggressive about it, but... Um, <laughs> In recent years, uh, J.K. Rowling is not exactly a well-liked figure anymore, um, for some valid reasons and some invalid. Um, yeah. I want to uh, basically avoid talking about that whenever possible, because in my opinion, it is very easy to separate the art from the artist, and I don't really care what her opinions are, even if they are really shitty. Um I basically feel the same way. Um, I do understand why people would... So some other people might find it more difficult to continue enjoying the books, but we basically just want it to be known that we're not going to be looking at it from that angle, and there are no shortage of other places that you can look for that kind of thing uh, should you be interested in it. We just want to... Right. It, yeah, we it's... have fun going through a series that we're both fond of and uh, uh... talking about it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like I said, I went through Mark Reed's Harry Potter and Potterless, and both of those get very political and you know, look into a lot of subtext that I don't necessarily think is there. There's a lot of people we may, who... We may touch on some some of the points uh, where they're relevant to the books, yeah. but we're not going to talk about uh, her politics in in terms of things that aren't, aren't relevant. We're not going to... This is not a J.K. Rowling podcast. This is a Harry yeah, Potter podcast. Yeah, pretty much. If there's something that my, my thing, in the book, then we might. <laughs> my thing basically is, you know, I don't think anybody is immune to criticism, but I also don't think that if someone is, like, you know, bad in one regard, then they're bad in every regard. So I'm kind of sick of hearing, like, you know, well, she's the, very anti... Like, you know, you know, she's anti-trans, <laughs> and that's that's a fact. Like, we can't, we can't deny that. I'm not going to defend yeah. that. But that doesn't mean that she's also, you know, racist and writer, sexist or, and oh, blah, that, blah, yeah. blah. It's like, you can... You can you're not all good or all bad. People have shades of gray. So, yes. <laughs> so like I said, we may be, be the point a little bit there, but um, there'll be in, there'll be instances not... where it will come up, but it's certainly not going to be a focus. Yep, that's basically it. Um, with that out of the way, uh, shall we get started proper? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, before we actually talk about the 
contents of the first chapter here. Um, the thing that kind of got us into thinking about the series in the first place was a few months ago, um, we were looking at some alternate artwork we for the book covers, covers, and then yeah. also looking at the artwork that's at the uh, chapter headers for the American versions. And so... Um, yeah, there are no pictures inside this book in uh, in my copy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I certainly don't uh, plan to have, you know, a long discussion about the artwork of the book, but um, I just figured from what I've seen, um, like, I'm obviously I'm used to the to the U.S. covers, so whenever I see the British ones, they always seem a little weird to me because the character art looks a little more dopey. I, I get, but, but I'm looking <laughs> I at what you mean. I'm looking at the U.S. one right now, and Harry on the cover of this book looks terrible. So it's like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> cultural bias. Um, yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm reading through the PDF. And uh, I've got the actual book here, but it's the paperback, and it's, you know, got the raving reviews, and <clears throat> I remember there was one thing on here, I'm trying to see if I can actually find the quote, it might not be on my copy, but there was a, there was one that basically said that, like, you know, 20 years in the future, like, this this book is so good, and is like, it's captured so many people's imaginations. Twenty years in the future, people will like still be talking about it and make references to like broomsticks and muggles. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah it has. <laughs> and that's a nice little prediction there. But uh, yeah, I guess not really too much else to say about it. There's the whole philosopher versus sorcerer thing, which is, you know, kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure um, people. If you're, re if you're watching this podcast, you're probably already familiar with uh, some of the more well-known cultural um, changes there. Yeah, from the explanation I've heard, it was just that, like, you know, when Scholastic got the rights to publish the books in America, they were worried that um, kids would be, like, put off by the word philosopher because it's too, <laughs> like, boring sounding. So they're like, we got to make sure that they know this is a book about magic. So they changed it to Sorcerer's Stone, which is not a <laughs> thing that exists. But it's, I, I don't know if it would have done as well if it had the original title. It very well could have, but whatever. I mean, it, it was certainly successful enough here, and I'm not, I don't think that British kids are more familiar with, like, medieval alchemy than American kids are necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's, I'm used to calling it Sorcerer's Stone. I know that's, like, the non-canon title, but whatever. Um, I'm not the type to be fussy about what right. people call things, uh anymore at least <laughs> um but yeah i guess that's more or less it so we can kind of get into our notes here and uh overanalyze the crap out of these uh <laughs> how many pages is it? it starts on page 12 ends on starts on page 12 for you in my pdf it does uh let's <clears throat> see this is incredibly stupid but we could go over what the first like non non-chapter pages are oh yes it's a, important so mine starts with um well, okay, there's the cover, and then the first actual paper page, uh, it just says Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and then there's a picture of the Hogwarts insignia with Draco Dormian's Nunquan Titalandus. Yeah, I don't um, have anything like that. The, the page after that says, Titles available in the Harry Potter series, in reading order. Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire. So I suppose this was a reprint from 2005-ish. Uh, okay. Wait, no. No, Goblet of Fire yeah, is 2000. Got... Right. Sorry, I was thinking of the movie. Yeah, um, 05 was uh, Half-Blood Prince. Right, so this would be some sometime between 2000 and 03, I want to say. Right, so yeah, oh, mine, oh. mine starts with a page of reviews, then it has a title page with a kind of crappy drawing of a castle that doesn't even really look like Hogwarts, honestly. <laughs> um, then it's got the list of chapters another title page for no reason, and then it just goes into the first chapter. It doesn't have uh, okay. a list of any other books uh, or anything. I wasn't actually done, by the way. Um, oh, after okay. the titles available, there's another page that looks basically the same as the one with the insignia, except the insignia is larger, uh, and then it says J.K. Rowling and Bloomsbury with the Bloomsbury logo. Then there's a page listing uh, copyright information, basically. Um, then there is an attribution to... Uh, Jessica, who loves stories, and who loved them too, and for Dee, who heard this one first. 
I presume those are Rowling's children. I'm not sure. I am not um, sure either. Mine doesn't and then there's a handwritten note from my mother that uh, says that the book belongs to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mine has a bunch of water. That touch one. Oh, good. <clears throat> I got it, uh, I think, from like a book sale maybe like 10 years ago. It's definitely not my original copy. I actually have two copies of this now that I think about it. Let me go get my other one. Oh I'll my God. be just 30 seconds. This other copy is, uh, mm, it's slightly different. It's a different printing. Um, I believe, and this one's also a lot more beaten up. Uh, the, oh, this, huh. This one also seems to have been published around the same time because it also mentions Goblet of Fire. Hmm. And it has exactly the same opening pages. It's just that the front is different. The cover illustration is smaller and surrounded by a border of red with gold stars. So basically it's, it's like the, it's like the player's choice version. I don't know, because the the original one I mentioned uh, says a Triple Smarties Gold Award winner on it. Oh. No, I was just referring to game box arts that just kind of take the box art and make it smaller with a pointless border. Uh, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> um, yeah. Seems like the only thing that's different is the cover. That's interesting. Good. Anyway. <laughs> Have you heard about the adult covers? Um... I think I've heard of them. When I was in a, a bookstore a few weeks ago, I saw uh, copies of the books it, with two different sets of color uh, cover illustrations, both of which were different from the kind that I had. I don't remember which kind they were. Hmm. Uh, I know that neither of them were the American kind either, like the standard American kind. But one was the one that was like black with like a, you know, like a fancy looking symbol for each one. I think. Those might be the adult covers. I don't remember. There, there's a ton of different covers out there. but and There seemed to be another one that was some kind of new cover. I don't think it was the anniversary ones you showed me, though. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, those were specifically, like, what what were those, like, Thai covers? Thailand, I think. Something like yeah. that, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, getting into the meat of it. Um, this chapter, I, it's um... difficult to say how we should... <laughs> Because, like, I can go through my notes, and then I just don't want to get ahead of, like, anything that you have written. But, uh, I see. Um, well, let's see. Uh, we could probably give a... Should we give a summary of the chapter? Uh, I don't even know if we really need to. I figure if any... I feel like I, I, my, recommendation, people... my recommendation for anybody listening to this, like, if it isn't obvious, we're going to be getting into spoilers from the get-go. I mm -hmm. am not, like, obviously we've read the series. We're not going to be like, oh, what's up with this quarrel guy? Um, <laughs> and so, like, all that's going to be talked about. And also, I figure, like, if you want to read along with us, then just read the chapter first. Um, yeah. But, uh, um, but well, it's more so for people that, you know, perhaps like me, read the series or watched the movies a while ago, but aren't familiar with the chapter-to-chapter -chapter, um How it breaks events. down, right. Yeah, it might so, yeah. be a good idea just to have a very, very basic summary of what the chapter is about. I mean, we already yeah. are going to kind of have that with the titles of these, but... Yeah. Um, this one's, you know, straightforward. This is just uh, mostly following Vernon. Um, it's uh, November 1st, uh, 1981, uh, the day <laughs> after the Potters were killed, and Indeed. Uh, basically, you know, following Vernon's daily life, seeing all this weirdness going around, and then at the end we have Dumbledore, McGonagall, and... Hagrid and baby Harry drop him off at the doorstep, and that's basically it. It's just kind of setting stuff up. Yeah. So. <clears throat> First thing I wrote was the baker's opposite, because you always make a reference to that. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a few notes before that one, so... Okay. Um, first thing I wanted to mention was uh, just the descriptions of the Dursleys at the beginning. It's like the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, like, I like these descriptions. I feel like it paints a good picture. And it, it's a very ordinary, thank you very much, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just from the get-go, like... Hardly any neck. <laughs> yeah, like, from the get-go here, I've always thought of the Dursleys as being a very exaggerated, like, rolled, rolled doll style, like, these are not real people that would ever exist, like, <laughs> type people. And, yeah, just the idea of him being, like, you know, like, this super beefy like, just generally angry at the world type of guy, and then Petunia with, like, the super long neck and, like, <laughs> just, I don't know, I can, I, I see them as basically, like, illustrations that could never actually be real people. And 
I think well, that's, that's the kind thing, of hilarious. right? Is, is, is Rowling um, has this tendency to kind of, you know, exaggerate the descriptions of things to make everything seem a little bit more um, fantastical, which is ironic because this is about, you know, the two characters who are supposed to be the least fantastical. But... Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the Roald Dahl thing, it, it's like it's... I haven't really read too many books from him, but um, they, they've just... The Dursleys remind me of the parents from Matilda, basically. They're just incredibly <laughs> shitty people. Yeah, like, and I... I've, if not for the fact that uh, he is not British, I could totally see Danny DeVito playing for him. <laughs> oh. um, I want to mention, actually, now that I'm looking at this page again, uh, a good example of things that I, you know, just would not have remembered that uh, because they're not strictly important to the plot. I did not remember that Dursley was in drills. Um, <laughs> yep, grunting. It doesn't come up. It yeah. basically never does. There's like, he has like people over for dinner to like try to make some kind of sale or something in the second book but like other than that i don't think it really ever mentions his job um yeah. i assume they picked drills just because they're very boring um that's uh that's my assumption as well so um the uh, next thing on here is just the absurdity of just their extreme phobia of anything unusual <laughs> yeah <laughs> um <laughs> Which just kind of leads into, like, okay, so, obviously, like, this first chapter is kind of just establishing stuff, and it's not going to get into, like, all this backstory stuff, obviously. Um, but it's like, we know that um, Petunia, you know, her sister was Lily, who had magical powers, Petunia didn't. And so, like, yeah. you know, she is aware of the magical world, and presumably Vernon is also, probably because she told him. So it's it's just, yeah. it's weird to me that, like, the wizarding world is supposed to be this big secret, and yet it kind of just isn't. Well, like, we, can pre we can presume that it's only... I, I assume that there's some level of coercion going on here where, like... I mean, in the case of the, the Dursleys, they don't want to even acknowledge it anyway. So they're kind of fine. But even if there was somebody that wanted to blab, like, it's it gets established a little bit more clearly later in the series, you know, how exactly the magical government goes about maintaining their kind of social order and um, level of secrecy there with, you know, <laughs> tracking magic use and stuff like that. They could probably suppress information about the Wizarding World amongst muggles if they wanted to, at least in this kind of, you know, pre-internet age where uh everything would be a little bit yeah slower to it's travel. uh it's just it's weird to think about like anybody who is a blood relative to a muggle born is now yeah. basically aware of this world and is just kind of like th you can it's, look but you can't touch <laughs> yes yeah, it, it's there was something i wanted to say about this i'm trying to think how to even word it it's like there's not really much of a parallel to draw but it's like, you know, they're aware of this society that has, like, abilities that they don't. And so, like, they basically just kind of shun it because, like, oh, they're fucking weirdos. I don't want to deal with them. And it just, it kind of seems yeah. like, you know, in Petunia's case, it's out of jealousy. At least mm -hmm. it was originally. Um, I don't know, like, over the years how her opinion of it changed necessarily. But yeah, if you're just, like, you know through marriage discover like oh yeah by the way there's witches and wizards out there but they suck you, you don't want to deal with them he's like oh <laughs> yeah okay yeah fuck those guys like <laughs> it's just it's so weird again i have and, to like, imagine that the Dursleys are a particular case here and that you know somebody else that might have married somebody who's related to a witch or wizard would probably you know even if they were interested in sharing this information would probably be coerced against doing so by uh I, yeah. By force. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, um, no, I just mean, you know, the Ministry probably keeps some level of tabs on them. Plus, they have the cooperation of the Muggle government as well. Yeah. So, um, I also wanted to draw attention to a really weird line here. Um, when Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on the dull gray Tuesday, our story starts. It's like... She's kind of, yeah, it's, the... It's a the, weird <laughs> break from, like... Like, obviously, this chapter isn't from Harry's perspective, and the majority of them are, but it's yeah. it's weird because this is, like, the only... T like, there's... 
I don't know how to say it. Like you, you have the omniscient narrator, but it never like refers to itself as a story, other than like this one time. Indeed. I think. It just, yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> I read that and it just seemed out of place. I um, I figured you know it's it's you know either um, early installment weirdness probably. or just there's a bit of that making, in this book, or just making use of um, the the different tents. But probably a little column A, a little column B. Yeah, I can think of at least two other instances where this book does like kind of a weird break from the usual format, and I'll point them out when we get to them. Oh yeah, I think um, I can think of those too. So, uh, let's see. Um, Vernon calls Dudley a little tyke, which there's nothing <laughs> wrong with this, but I remember people being like, "What? Isn't that isn't that like a term for lesbians?" It's like, no, <laughs> no, that's dyke. Like, oh have you never heard the word tyke before? <laughs> I uh, I enjoyed the description of Vernon uh, having a great day because he got to yell at five yell different at people, people. <laughs> and uh, it's like he's just such an asshole. Yeah. Um, then of course we get to the baker's opposite. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so this is like this is just kind <laughs> of a running gag now. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so I looked up a page of like differences between the British and US versions of the book and a lot of them are stuff that you would expect. You've got uh, car park becomes parking lot, uh, motorbike becomes motorcycle, dustbin becomes trash can, but then you have the baker's opposite becomes the bakery. And without the context, I'm like, what the fuck is the baker's opposite? Didn't it's... you initially thought that... No, I always remember that you th that you like mistakenly thought it was the opposite belonging to the baker, but you no, me that that's not the case. I didn't think that, but I was like, what the hell is this wording? Weird. Like, it's just um, it's a weird so way of explaining it. For those who are still confused, they mean the baker that is opposite the street from where he works. It's so let me let me find the actual passage. Um, yeah, it's uh. He was in a very good mood until lunchtime when he thought he'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the baker's opposite. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. It's its a Britishism that I can understand why they changed it, because it sounded awkward. But, uh... <laughs> I'm not sure if I found it confusing as a child or not, and, when I, and then when I saw it uh, reading the chapter today, I just laughed because I remembered the conversation we had. So I'm yeah. not sure how I would have uh, responded to it because um, even though I am British and live here, there's a lot of Britishisms that I'm not quite aware of because my family isn't British. Um, I've only grown up here. Uh, so <laughs> um, that said, overall, it probably would be better if we're going to have like a Britishisms count, it would probably be better for you to do it because you're more likely to discern them yeah. from the rest of it. Um, <laughs> Whereas I might kind of gloss over and be like, yeah, that's a normal way of phrasing that. Yeah, that's actually something I have to bring up. Um, I did kind of want to have, like, a series of running gags. Like, whenever whenever <laughs> X happens, we can, like, count it up, you know, like a fuse box count. Um, yeah. And so I figured uh, un unlocalized Britishisms would probably be one of them. Um, <laughs> I don't think we really have any of those in this first chapter. Um no, that I then there's a uh, whimsy, which is just any time <laughs> that the Wizarding World has something just wacky Basically about it. Of, that rule it, of silly. Yeah, it, so a good example are the moving staircases that are incredibly inconvenient. Like, why are they there? <laughs> you know, because it's whimsical. So like, so stuff like that. Um, yes. Certain w usages of word of like certain words, I probably have to pick out a few of those. Um, and phrases as well, like Harry pocketed it. Yeah, pocketed it. Um, turning on their heel, which there is one case of that in this <laughs> chapter. Um, Any unusual word choice that isn't necessarily a Britishism might be a good count grope. as well, like a grope or ejaculate. Um, well, I can tell you right now, there's two uses of ejaculate in the entire series, and I think yeah. it's 38 uses of grope. I, I, oh. di I did do a control F. You can um, also do just like um, things that sound unintentionally dirty, um, such as ejaculate, that would come under that. But uh, <laughs> no, frickin' Potterless, they, they hated the use of the word grope every time it came up. I, it's like, <laughs> I think it's a perfectly valid term for like if you're blindly fumbling for something, but like. Yes, yeah, I would think so. Know, it depends like, on the context. Like, come on, happened. what are you doing? Why are you putting this word in this book. Ugh. Like, Not the only word they had a problem with. We'll get to that. 
<laughs> oh god. Um, um. But yeah, so if anybody has ideas for more of those, I'm. I have one more, by the way. Um, okay. Which is, uh, character like any any names of people mentioned that are never mentioned again. So you know, one-off people, and there's already two of them in this chapter. Um, or at least I think there are. It's possible that these people are mentioned again later. Is one but... of them Daedalus Diggle? Yes. <laughs> no, he, he <laughs> shows up several times again after this. Okay. What I figured I would do is um, is compile ones that seem like they might be contenders, and then we can just cross them off if they do show up again. Okay. Um, the other one is Jim McGuffin. <laughs> uh, is that the weatherman? Yes. Pretty sure he never gets mentioned again. Um, but I, I, I'm actually <laughs> going to be talking about that when we get to that part. Um, oh, good. <laughs> surprisingly. So, um, um, I I think I think my favorite one-off character in the, like, favorite in quotes, just meaning, like, the fact that this character literally has one mention in the entire series is a kid named Derek who, <laughs> uh, shows up as just one of the very few people to stay at Hogwarts over Christmas, I think in Prisoner of Azkaban, and Dumbledore off offers him some sausages, I think. <laughs> and he is mentioned once and never again in the series. Excellent. But, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh. Oh, was there more to that, or? No, no. Um, okay. I mean, I have, an, I have another point here, but it's kind of hard to say, like, you know, what order these are in. I guess I'll do mine since I've got more points, and you can jump in if I pass uh -huh. over anything. Um, okay. The next thing is just me being uh, extremely pedantic. Uh, Vernon said he was going to go to the bakery to get a bun and gets a donut. I don't know if a donut could be considered a bun. Uh, no. Um, I would not say so. I, think, I suppose he changed his mind. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so as he's, uh, as he's going back to the office, he bumps into somebody and it says uh, he's wearing a yes. violet cloak and he's like, you know, super excited and whatever. He's like, even Muggles like himself should be celebrating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this is still that this is actually Daedalus Diggle. Um, oh, really? Because we do see him a few other times later in the series. He's usually described as being uh, as wearing purple and being very overly excited. So uh, it's probably this guy. Okay. Um. Yeah, so what I wrote about that is just, it, this could be kind of an early installment weirdness thing where, like, oh, you know, they're supposed to be keeping things under wraps, um, but, you know, they're doing a fucking terrible job of it in this first chapter yeah. with these people whispering on the street wearing their clothes. But to be fair, McGonagall does acknowledge this later and is like, these people are being so reckless, what do they think? Yeah, she doing? calls them out on it, so <laughs> it's not normal behavior. Yeah. Um, oh, here was another... <laughs> Here's another sentence just of Vernon being the worst. Is uh, uh, He set off for home hoping he was imagining things, which he had never hoped before because <laughs> he, he didn't approve of imagination. Of imagination. Like, yeah, what? I wrote that as well. <laughs> Why is he such an asshole? <laughs> like, what happened to you to make you this way? We I need, don't know. We need the Vernon backstory. Like... Yeah, we seriously. we know we know about Petunia like you know she was jealous of her sister and then kind of resented all things magical. Why is Vernon such a douche? <laughs> like, I don't know. Some um, I mean I don't think anybody's born that way. He probably went through something, even if it wasn't like traumatic or anything. He, there was probably some kind of experience that led him to, you know, believe like okay, this is how the world should be. Yeah. I mean I I've had a conversation with somebody before who I don't think. Uh, still reflects this um, thought process, but at the time they were like angry at themselves for like having hobbies and interests, and they're like, "It's such a waste of time. I'm I'm such a waste of a human being. Like I need to, or I need to focus on being a productive member of society." I'm like, "God, I don't think that's a very healthy way of thinking." <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, when, yeah, I mean, when I was in I school, I would always like, you know, I would quote stuff from TV shows or like flash cartoons or whatever, <laughs> and there was uh, this one person that I went to school with who would always be like, man, you have way too much time on your hands. I'm like, why? Because I'm in <laughs> enjoying things? Like, yeah. Like, we're freaking 11 years old. Like, what am I supposed <laughs> to be doing with my time? Right. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Um, let's see. The, the next thing is uh, just another case of me pointing out strange phrases. Um, she told him over dinner all about Mrs. Next Door's problems with her daughter. 
<laughs> I assume that just represents Vernon not really caring who the neighbors are. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of what I was thinking. Is in, he just in contrast to uh, Mrs. Dursley caring way too much? <laughs> right. I just like how she doesn't even get a name. Um, also, we. Shunned. Yep, I have that one written down because it's not <laughs> it, it's it's won't in the American version. Um, Why? Because we don't say shan't. No one says it here either. It's a fancy word. <laughs> well, apparently Dudley does. Mm. Yeah, Dudley at the age of like one and a half. Like I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how old yeah, Dudley the actually in, is. In the, um, in the they they mentioned that he's about the same age as Harry, and in the movie Harry is obviously like a baby. Um, but in this, I think he I think canonically he would be two years old, right? Like two and a half almost. Uh, two and a few months because he was hold on July thirty first seventy nine. I can actually. Well, no, Harry was born July thirty first, nineteen eighty. Um, he's oh, just over bad. one year old in this because this is eighty one. Um, there's a there's a particular line I'm thinking of actually. I have the PDF here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, um, right. It would be eighty. My bad. It's uh, it's in Half Blood Prince. Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, in Half Blood Prince, chapter three. Uh, Dumbledore says, as you will no doubt be aware, Harry comes of age in a year's time. No, said Aunt Petunia, speaking up for the first time. No, he doesn't. He's a month younger than Dudley, and Dudders doesn't, doesn't turn 18 until the year after next. So, I guess Dudley really is only, like, a year and a half old here, because I guess that means he was yeah. born in June, and it's currently November 1st. So, huh. mm. probably a bit young to be talking, but I don't remember like what's normal for when babies start oh, I can never remember that either <clears throat> anyway doesn't really matter <laughs> but uh yeah I just I liked the uh, I liked him saying shant like, <laughs> good, good shit it is pretty um, good so yeah then we have the news um where we With have Jim McGuffin. and uh and Ted the newscaster which I actually saw a post about recently it's like hey, what if this was actually Ted Talks it's like, why would it be TED Talks? <laughs> but um, I, it, it's it's interesting, though, because the newscaster is like, hmm, been seeing all these birds. Sure is mysterious. And he, like, grins <laughs> awkwardly. It's like, is Ted in on it? Does he know what's going on? Like, <laughs> so I like the idea that uh, Ted Tonks, who is married to uh, Andromeda Lestrange, I guess is what her... Uh, like maiden name would be, you know, like this from this freaking pure blood family. I like the I like the thought that she just married this random like newscaster. Like, so it's probably not yeah, him. Not but, that uh, time, but. No. Uh, also, they uh, they mentioned bonfire night, which is a holiday I'm unaware of. Um, I mean, you're aware of it now, but you presumably were not. And yeah, I I didn't know what it was really until you told me about it. So. They said uh, people have been celebrating it early. It's not until next week, so yep, I yeah checked when it was. That, that would be November fifth. I'm actually out. curious what what day of the week is November first, nineteen eighty. Oh, the what? days of the week are so inconsistent in this series because in every single year they uh, they start like the first day of school on September first, and it's always a Monday. Ah, so, good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Rowling has gone on record saying that uh, she's not very good at maths. Uh, I presume that calendar, like timekeeping, for the also that is probably just who strength. cares? But um, I mean, yeah, it's not a huge deal. I'm I'm a, I'm fucking pedantic and anal about that uh, when it comes to like my works, at least the ones where I do track time, mostly my D and D campaign. But yeah, it's it's not really that important. It doesn't take away from the story. Yeah, I'm just checking here. Uh, November first, nineteen eighty one, was a Sunday. And the fifth would have been a Thursday, the next week. So, does that? Uh, I don't remember if that tracks with what they've said in this one, but that's fine. Well, yeah, because um, this is on November first, and they said bonfire night is not until next week. Okay. So, I just couldn't remember if they ever mentioned specifically what day of the week it was. But uh, no. Okay. Anyway, um, what's the next note you have? Um. Well, I've actually mentioned that one. It's it's that one's kind of atemporal. Uh, the next one that's actually oh, that one's also atemporal. It's just a thought about the Dursleys. Um, you can say it. <clears throat> um, okay. Well, 
I wrote that. I'm not sure what, like, this might be a weird thing to say. I'm not sure what class the Dursleys are supposed to be because they act really snobby. And I noticed that throughout this chapter that I was like, oh, we don't associate with these kind, the riffraff or whatever. Right. And I'm like, are you guys, like, because they, they, they don't seem upper class to me. They seem like, oh. They're, you know, yeah, they're probably class. middle class because, like, it's. Because um, Petu like, Petunia doesn't okay, work. So he he's. What did they say his position was? He's, like, the head of the company, or let me look. Uh, he's the director, director of a firm yeah. called Grunnings. Yeah. I, I had a, I, I was, I had words about the word firm, too, because that just seemed weird, it's, but. It's, yeah. Oh, no, that's a, that's a, that's a terminology use. Yeah. Um, it, it's a weird thing for me to note, because I never really think about people's class generally, but in this case, they act really snobby, but I always thought of them as being really trashy, and that probably is just because they're abusive. Like, it's not like upper class. I think of it as... It, I don't even know if it's necessarily classist. It's, it's like, almost racist without it actually being race, because it's, <laughs> it's specifically, like, you know, he's talking about, like, all these people in these weird outfits... Um, and yeah. he says, like, oh, well, this guy's even older than I am. What's he doing dressed like this? So it's like, at one point, it sounds like, oh, you know, these these damn youngsters and their stupid fashion trends. But it's <laughs> basically just anything that isn't, like, you know, prim and proper. Yeah. They just kind of have a problem with. Yeah. So I don't know what you'd call that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, the next thing I took a note of was... Uh, the scene where, like, after he comes home and they're talking a bit before going to bed, um, you know, he asks, like, what was your sister's son's name and all this. And then he decides to not bring up to her that, like, he heard somebody mentioning the Potters and their son Harry because he doesn't want to, like, put her put it on her mind or whatever. Which mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just now kind of realizing that, uh, you know, her sister died the night before. And she still doesn't know about it. And if right. he had said anything, it might have, like, you know, caused her to worry. And it's... I'm kind of curious, like, what would have happened, but... Uh. Yeah, I mean, probably not much of anything anyway. She found out the very next day, hey, here's your nephew, because your yeah. sister's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's kind of weird to know that, like, nobody <clears throat> said anything, because... Yeah. I get, like, one of the things that's always kind of weird to think about in this series is that, uh, you know, Harry has to stay with them because he has no other family at all, which is bizarre. Like, I don't know how there's no extended family. So I guess like, you know, if they did die, nobody's going to be passing on the, like, there's not going to be like a cousin, like, Oh God, did you hear what happened to Lily? The other, like, so I suppose, I suppose James could have been an only child. His grandparents could all be dead. And yeah. he could just not. I mean, yeah. I, don't I, know. <laughs> I think I think there are like actual family trees of a lot of the characters in this that were posted mm -hmm. like on Pottermore and stuff. I've just never looked at any of that. Yeah, I know they have. So. Um, <laughs> the next thing I noted is that the chapter has a lot of like clickbaity sentences, and I think I think you've mentioned this to me before, but it has a lot of this. This is also kind of early installment witness where. Yeah, here we go. He yawned and turned over. It couldn't affect them how very wrong he was. <laughs> I actually didn't notice that. Oh, really? I to to me it felt very like 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 trying a little too hard to be like, "Oh, something's going to happen. Keep reading." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little I bit. This anyway. <laughs> I, I my eyes just kind of glazed over that sentence, but yeah, that is kind of weird. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Clearly, I need more things to take notes on <laughs> yeah um, obviously so the next thing i have is uh just the the paragraph just describing dumbledore i don't really have anything to say about it other than i thought it was really well written it definitely paints a good picture of what he's oh, supposed yeah, to I look so like too. the and, back of the back of this book has a picture of him using the put outer oh. um i should probably show you that after this okay yeah, mine. Uh, I'm not. I'm not looking at the hardcover, so I can't see the inside of the dust flaps. But uh, mine just has Harry on the front and some unknown person holding a candle on the back. Oh, mine's a paperback, by the way. Oh, I didn't mention this. The reason that I have two copies is I'm pretty sure that one of them was my sister's from when she had to read it at school, and then she just didn't return it to the library. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> um. 
Also, with Dumbledore's description, uh, the the fact that they specifically point out that it looks like his nose is broken. Ah, uh, yes. Because that yeah. is a relevant detail way later on. It is. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I didn't make a note, but I I was like, yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> I, had a, I had a higher threshold for what I considered noteworthy, I suppose. <laughs> I just figured it would be good to point out stupid shit. So, like, like shant. Um, yes. <laughs> so. Also, also, I think that's possibly one of very few uses of the word noteworthy that is like literally correct instead of being used in a figurative sense hmm. because I was making notes. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so uh, before we get into the put out. Yeah, before we get into the put out or um, <laughs> so um, I also noticed that uh, you know he uses this thing to suck all the lights out of the street lights on the street and then it says like the only lights that can then be seen are the eyes of the cat across from him or whatever um, which means that because this is like around midnight everybody on this street has already gone to bed so they're all like stuck up snobs like the dursleys none of them have like a nightlife or like <laughs> just you know stay up past midnight right so, so i guess that's just kind of uh par for the course in this area but you could uh, say. <laughs> so as for the put outer, um, I don't have an issue with it, but I have Me to bring either. it up. My, my note, my note is just gotta complain about the put outer and inconsistency or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to bring it up because of like <clears throat> Schubert in Potterless because he, a he huge problem with it. fucking bi he bitches about the put outer like five times per book when <laughs> it's only ever mentioned in this chapter. I think it, like, gets a brief mention in, like, the fifth book, and then, like, it's in Dumbledore's will and Ron gets it in the seventh book. Like, the thing never comes up, but he finds ways to shoehorn it in constantly. And, like, he gets super angry over this thing because... And then when they change the name, he's like, no, she should have stuck with it even though it was stupid. Yeah, that, that's his thing, is, like, every time he talks about it, he has the exact same complaint, which is, it's called the put-outer... The first couple times it's mentioned, and then it gets renamed to the do to the Deluminator in Deathly Hollows, and he's like, "Well, why did they rename it? Like, did she just decide that it was a stupid name and it needed to be changed? Because like, wh why don't you just stick with your guns and like stick with the bad name?" Or so, I don't know why and, they called it two names for it anyway. And, it's not even like a and so one. like people like he always has these guests on the show. Like people have come up with all these explanations <laughs> like well, this is just the narrator who doesn't know what it's called, or, like, Harry doesn't know what it's called um, until he sees like, the no. name and the thing. And then he's like, oh, well, if that was the case, and there should have been a scene where when he's, like, when they're reading out the will and they had it, he, he should have been like, oh, I thought it was called the put-outer. Oh, I thought it was spelled Hadoo. Um, <laughs> and um, look, he, he's, like, it pisses me off because he rants about this so goddamn often <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> It's such a minor point. Yeah. Like, I, in my opinion, it just it got retconned, and that's it. Like, I don't even think it's a retcon, right? It could just have two different names, like a, um, I don't know, like a cup and a mug, right? Like, <laughs> you could you could say those are slightly different. Things, like, I, I just I've heard so many different arguments about this. It's like I know way more about it than I should because, like, <laughs> oh, they said put outer with a capital P and a capital O, which is implying that it's like the proper name of it and not like a nickname given to it. So that must be what it's actually called. And then they're like, oh, well, what if his specific one is called the Deluminator and it's just like a type of put outer? And they're like, no, that's not the case because it's said to be like a unique invention. <laughs> it's like, who the fuck cares? Does it? Does anyone actually care about this other than Mike? Schubert? No. <laughs> I mean, maybe they do, but I don't think they. It's just the density of focus. It's on this it's thing that yeah, just an unreasonable amount of attention given to it. Like goddamn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Point is, it's a magic cigarette lighter that sucks light out of nearby sources and also can apparently help you find people when they say your name. But we don't know about that yet. <laughs> Why does it yeah. do that? I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah. God. Okay. Um, so now we're getting into timeline garbage. Um, oh. Yeah. What was the next thing you had? Uh, the next thing was just talking about Dumbledore in general. Um, just about his character, or. Yeah, and how he's established it, like what we know about him from this chapter. Uh, um, you can go ahead and do that before I get into being pedantic. Well, I'm going to be pedantic about geography in a minute here, anyway. So. Ooh, me too. <laughs> Nice, we can get oh, into good. that together. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, regarding Dumbledore, um, 
he's already kind of established as like an oddball here because McGonagall is like stressed about various things and he's just like, hey, want a sweet? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I do like that because it is consistent with this characterization to have kind of weird priorities for things. Mm, um, wit blubber oddment tweak. Yes. Um, <laughs> forgot about that. Um, and uh, to... Uh, uh, God, I don't know how to get into this. A lot of people have complained about, like, is this, you know, is it really a good idea for Harry to stay with the Dursleys just because they're related to him? Like, could they not have sent him to literally anywhere else? You know, even a wizard family might have been a good idea just because they're kind of horrible people. And even right. if we suppose the Dumbledore didn't know about that, like, McGonagall brings it up. Like, she, she's like, yeah, this she sounds says, like a terrible idea. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they couldn't be, like, less... They, they couldn't be less like us than they are, mm -hmm. like, Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and yet, Dumbledore insists on it, and I think that there is, like, an in-universe reason for this to do with, like... There is. Petunia being able to maintain the, like, familial love protection afforded by Lily. Right. Which doesn't... It's like, people say it doesn't make sense because it kind of goes against... I don't know, it's like, because Lily really genuinely loved Harry. Petunia does not love Harry. Why does Lily's love get to transfer just because Petunia is related? It's um, it's literally to do with it, it's blood relation. That's that's it. Um, the thing about all this is the magic within the series is always kind of ill explained. Um, there's yeah. never like a point where it like really breaks down. This is exactly how everything works. So you can kind of have stuff like this that fudges it, and it's like, oh yeah, this is how it works, and it doesn't really <clears throat> go this against even... anything else. Yeah, because... this isn't even the worst thing that falls apart under scrutiny anyway. Because like if it's that easy to do crazy powerful things with just you know a flick of a wrist then you would think that the world would be a lot different than <clears> it is but i mean you know it's whatever it's fiction you can suspend your disbelief so yeah <laughs> um so my take on this is basically um like I, there's some specific stuff with the timeline of harry being taken here and everything but we'll get to that in a minute um as far as harry being taken to live with the dursleys in general i think that you know Dumbledore knows about the the blood relation and the the protection that's put on him and everything and basically is like this is the safest place that he can be if he goes to live anywhere else he won't be offered this protection he doesn't think that Voldemort is gone for good so he's like it's probably for the best to make sure that we have this mm -hmm. and it's that it's basically like he knows this versus the Dursleys are shitty people, which he may have not been aware of at first, and then McGonagall kind of says something, and he either, like, doesn't take it seriously enough, or just is like, well, you know, greater good, I've gotta just do this anyway. The yeah. problem really just comes in with, uh, with, uh, what Martin would always talk about, because he thinks Dumbledore is a fucking horrible person. Um, <laughs> basically the fact that, you know, Dumbledore does not check up on Harry at all in the next ten years, and right. the kids being like horribly abused um and that i have to say is a lot less forgivable but yeah. it also doesn't to me it doesn't make dumbledore a horrible person it just means like you know he i think it's a naive mistake um which you could say is inconsistent with him being like this wizened old sage. He's type, playing like but... 4D chess with all this planning he has ahead and just <laughs> doesn't know yeah. about this. And and the point will also be brought ahead, like, you know, the letters being sent there specifically say Harry Potter, the cupboard under the stairs. Like, even if he oh, yeah. doesn't know about it, like, there's a magical way of telling that that's where he lives or whatever. So, like, mm -hmm. either Dumbledore knows that he's being mistreated and doesn't care, or he just doesn't know, which means he isn't putting in enough effort to find out. And either way kind of sucks. But it's yeah. also the type of thing where I don't think it completely makes him an irredeemable character. It's just, like, it's a no. flaw in his character that he didn't yeah. care about this enough. Yeah, I think it's possible to pull apart a knot a bit too much and go like, well, you know, this type, this little thing doesn't make sense. And it's like, I feel like in a story, if you, if there's some kind of problem with it that could be very easily solved with like one tiny tweak, then I don't find it to even really be that much of a problem in general. Like, I think that if there's something that affects the structure and coherence of the story as a whole, then that's 
more of a big deal. But something like this, they could have added a sentence where it, where, you know, he just said, uh, you know, perhaps even later on where he said, like, you know, I knew about this, but there was nothing I could do because it's the only place where you had the, um, you know, this familial blood protection or whatever. Like, they could have been just a little bit more specific with that, and that probably would have fixed the problem. And because they could have done that, it's, um, to me, it's almost, like, as good as if they had. Like, you can infer it. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, I don't know if that makes any sense to you. I would say the opposite, that, like, that they could have included this but didn't, so that means he just didn't think about it or whatever. But I don't know. My, my thing is, like, you know, like I was saying before, no person is all good or all bad. Like... Sure, you know, sure. Dumbledore's a good guy, he just, he's made some mistakes, this is one of those mistakes. This isn't the best example of it anyway, I just, I just meant that, like, I don't think the story <laughs> falls apart just because a character makes a bad decision sometimes, basically, like, or, or something isn't, you know, quite fully explained in a way that makes it, um, as coherent as it could be, but anyway, <laughs> that's, get, that's getting a little bit too nitpicky, uh, perhaps. That's fine, that's kind of what we're here for. True. Um, so... Let me read through some of this crap I have here. Like, this is all in order as I read it, but it's still so freaking disconnected. Um, so, first I just have a brief mention. Uh, McGonagall's description isn't as, like, detailed as Dumbledore's is, but it still kind of gets across the kind of person that she is, probably. You know that she's kind of, mm -hmm. like, you know, straight-laced and stern. Um, yes. It is impossible still, for me to... Uh, person. It is impossible for me to not see her as the actress. Um, it's impossible for me to not see these characters as the actors in general, I think. That's... Yeah, I, I'd say there's some characters where I can kind of, you know, imagine them a little bit differently, but, like, she just is... Is it Maggie Smith? Is that her name? I can't um, remember. Like, the, the, she's just the perfect role for that. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, here's, here's where we're getting into some timeline weirdness. So, this all kind of comes together. Um, it's a bunch of unrelated points that tie together into a weird, bigger picture. So, um, Lily and James are killed, and Harry is left on his own. Uh, Halloween night. I don't know what time of night. It might have been stated in the litter book, but it, it's sometime mm -hmm. that night. Um, he is eventually picked up by Hagrid. I don't know when. When Hagrid shows up, he says, um, this is getting into the geography thing, which we'll also talk about in a minute, but, um, uh, he says, uh, the house was almost destroyed. I got him out all right before the muggles started swarming around. Um, oh, good point. So it's like, house blows up. I would imagine then, like, you know, people are like, oh, what the hell? People come over to see, like, almost immediately. And Hagrid's yeah. already there, which doesn't make sense. But either way, he could have he could have apparated there. No, he's not. He not? I don't know. Like he's not supposed to use magic, but still sometimes he can do does. it with his umbrella. But I don't know if he can apparate though, because that's mm. like that's kind of like a higher level thing that you need like specific training for, which he got sure. like expelled before they would have learned that. I don't know. But um, yeah. Anyway, um. Regardless of how we look at that, um, basically an entire day passes where this kid is basically unattended. Like <laughs> he's either he's either completely unattended or is like you know flying with Hagrid and then left on a doorstep until he's picked up the next morning. So he's basically alone for like a day and a half. Like is uh -huh. he fed? Like, is he protected assume, from the elements? Like, what's... I assume I assume that Hagrid um, gave him some kind of food. Yeah, probably. Um, but <laughs> it's just, it's weird. Like, there's basically like an entire day where it's just like, where is Harry? What is where is he currently? What's going on? Here, here is my assumption, um, and you can tell me if this is inconsistent with anything. But I assume the house blows up somehow <clears throat> within minutes, or perhaps within a couple of hours. Um, Hagrid is there and he takes Harry, and it do, it would not take a whole day for him to get to uh, Privet Drive, so I no. assume he hid out somewhere for a while, awaiting instructions, like further instructions, maybe. Um, and that, that ties into the rest of the timeline that makes no sense. So we have, um, I, 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 like, I took notes on all of this because I never realized before <laughs> how weird this is. So Vernon sees McGonagall in cat form, uh, like, as he leaves for work that morning, it's like 9 in the morning, um, yeah. 
So she is already posted there because apparently... They're staking out the place. Um, Where was the line? Hold on. Yeah, Dumbledore says, Hagrid's late. I suppose it was he who told you I'd be here, by the way. Um, so ha So what happens is, Halloween night, they die. Then at some point between then and like 8.30 the next morning, Hagrid tells her that he Dumbledore is going to be coming to this place later. And so she goes there and stays there in cat form for the entire day while Dumbledore then doesn't show up until that midnight. Well, McGonagall, and... McGonagall also heard about... Uh, she, heard, she heard a rumor that, like... Yeah, she's hearing uh, rumors from people somehow. It's kind of unclear. Yeah. Like, Or it's also possible that Hagrid told her and she just doesn't want to believe it until she hears it from Dumbledore for whatever reason. Possibly. Um, I presume that, that um, Hagrid told her quickly something like, oh you know, James and Lily are dead, can you stake out this place? And I assume she was there to watch the place and see what they were like. Um, right, but it's just... It's funny, because, like, because Dumbledore shows up, he, uh, she says, like, I've been sitting on a brick wall all day, and he's like, all day, when you could have been celebrating? So it's like, she didn't have to be there the entire day, but was anyway for some reason. Perhaps, perhaps <laughs> she just chose to stake them out, I don't know. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Point is, there, there's some weird shit going on with the timeline here. Like, I don't, I, I'm I, not seeing it, honestly. I think it's just stuff that's unexplained. But I think that but, there's there are several plausible explanations. Here. But no, here's but here's where I'm here's where I'm questioning it though. Is like, so sometime like you know v either very late on the 31st or very early on the first, it is found that Harry is like alive in the in the wreckage of the house, and mm -hmm. like Hagrid is aware of this and lets her know about it. And then he takes the entire day to get Harry to to this place. Unless he was just, like, maybe he took him home and, like, maybe Hagrid was just kind of, like, watching over the baby for a few hours and then left at night. I guess that could have happened. I'm, I imagine but, he like, probably left at night so that he could fly under the cover of darkness. Maybe. Because um, yeah, if he flew during the day, people would notice. So, yeah, getting into geography here. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I, I, so, can I say what my note is? Is it about Bristol? Yes, it's about Bristol. I was like, yeah. hang on a minute, where exactly is Godric's Hollow? Because Brit, you guys can look this up, but Bristol is kind of, um, it's on the sea, uh, what, it's like, it's on like a, what would you even call that? Like a bay, almost, um, where if you cross it, you reach Wales. Um, so, but if you draw a line from Surrey to Bristol, that yeah. line keeps going. It's a, it's a more or less a straight line that is, uh... It, it's like a two-hour drive, is what I'm seeing. So what that translates to in a flying motorcycle, I couldn't say. But, uh... Um, but yeah, it... <laughs> it If you continue that line, you reach, like, Wales. And Godric's Hollow is not in Wales. I looked it up. It's it's mentioned in Death, uh, Deathly Hallows as being in the West Country, which means uh, Cornwall, Devon, Dorset, or Somerset. So the, it's the um, Southwest, right? Yes, yeah. Um, so, okay, fair enough, but... Anywhere that it could be within that area, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't to pass over Bristol. Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I the only thing I can think of, well, because they didn't even stop in Bristol. I could, I could assume that maybe he stopped in Bristol for some reason, but no, he no, says. No. Yeah. He Harry says fell asleep while over. they were passing over it. Like, is Hagrid just terrible with directions? <laughs> like, what is this? I don't know, but yeah, I just I love the idea. Of, like, the only way that we can transport this baby here is to have somebody pick him up on a, like, on a flying vehicle. Because, like, we have teleportation in this world. <laughs> like, let, let's let's really look at the options here, so... It's possible that they didn't know if there was some kind of, like, um, <clears throat> you know, haywire magic surrounding him that... Because they, they do not know how he survived. They're like, this baby could be a fucking ticking time bomb for all we know. We don't necessarily want to... But they kind <laughs> of do, because Dumbledore still knows to take them... To take him to family, so he knows about the love thing. Like... Yeah. But anyway, um... And I have more on that, too. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I just... I love the idea. So, we can't do side-along apparition, because it hasn't been invented yet. And if you don't know what I mean by that, um... Bringing someone with you. Yeah, it's that is never mentioned until the beginning of Half Blood Prince. 
And uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it directly contradicts things in previous books where, like, it would have made sense to apparate with somebody and they don't. So it's like, th that just didn't exist for some reason. Um, then there's uh, the flu network, and then there's port keys. There's, yeah. like, the only reason I can think of to not use either of those is, like, you don't want to be, like, holding an infant while, like, going through this weird, like, tumbling vortex of whatever the hell it is. But, yeah. like, I don't know. It, it's just weird that they, ha that they had to... Uh, they had to have Hagrid fly him there, and that he apparently takes this weird route going over Bristol for some reason. Yeah, um, I would think that even if he had to take some sort of more circuitous route towards Surrey from wherever Godric's Hollow is, that he would that that would be because he is avoiding uh, urban areas and not <coughs> fly over Bristol, which is like a pretty big city for UK standards. Uh. But yeah, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, okay, I gotta look up and see if this makes sense, and it didn't make sense. No. Um, <laughs> oh god. All right, let's see what else I got. I might just hit some of these real quick. Um, that was the last note I had was just the <coughs> geography. I've still got like freaking ten more. <coughs> um, let's see here. Oh yeah. Um, Dumbledore says uh, we've had uh, precious little to celebrate for eleven years. I didn't realize that Voldemort's like rain lasted that long so that means that it um, actually started in 1970 which is I interesting suppose. um what exactly did he do during his reign because during the second one he took over the ministry um which because it happened in the books yeah the first one it's i don't think it's ever really explained that much within the books them like it might have been touched on in like expanded material but uh Maybe the maybe the Death Eaters were just like Al Qaeda, like they had like a hidden base, and they were going around like, doing terrorist shit. Like I know a lot of people were kind of like, you know, being killed. A lot of families mm -hmm. were targeted and stuff, but uh, I don't think there was any type of like actual hostile takeover like he does in the uh, yeah. Vold War Two, as people call it. <laughs> um, God. So is aren't, aren't they called the first and second Wizarding War? I'm not sure, actually, because I thought the first Wizarding War was the one with Grindelwald, but uh, oh, I, I could maybe. be wrong on that one. I'm not positive. Uh, See, so yeah, that, that, like, that doesn't contradict anything. I just found that interesting. Um, McGonagall complaining about the wizards not concealing themselves enough. Uh, she says, mm -hmm. A fine thing it would be if on the very day that you know who seems to have disappeared at last, the muggles found out about us. It's like it's kind of a weird priority to have. Mm. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It, the, the, the wizards obviously put their secrecy in high priority. Yeah, which is that, that's still whole, so weird to me. But we'll probably talk about that <laughs> when we get to the uh, chapter where Hagrid uh, picks Harry Explains up from it. the from the shack. Yeah. Um, we have a mention of lemon drops, which are called lemon sherbet or sherbet lemon in the UK version. Which yeah, it's whatever. basically. It's basically, um, the closest thing I can say is I think those are similar to what you guys have, uh, pixie sticks. Um, so it's like a thing you break open and then it's just a, a, a line of, like... Like little powder. Know, like, yeah, but like it, sour powder. You, you sent me sherbet lemon, though, so it's like the powder inside a hard candy, right? Or do people just oh, eat the powder on its own? Um, see, I always thought of sherbet lemon as being those sticks, but let me actually check. I might be remembering wrong. Because I think you sent me sherbet lemon. You sent me some type of lemon candy. Oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm just confusing it. Why is the first result the entry on the Harry Potter wiki? This is a real thing. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, okay, it's like yeah, trickle no. tart, where people just assume it's a Harry Potter thing. You know what? I must have just had some kind of sherbet lemon stick. Uh, you're right. These are actually just like little hard sweets with the powder inside. Right. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, the localization there is just the fact that uh, in the U.S., sherbet is usually associated with, like, ice cream, so I can understand Yeah, that I only found out about that a few months ago. That's still weird to me. <laughs> <clears throat> um, minor thing I noticed, uh, I, I don't know why the hell I noticed this, but uh, McGonagall always calls Dumbledore Dumbledore. Or I think he she might have called him Albus at one point, but she always calls him by his last name. Yeah. But he always oh, well, calls her Professor. He never says Minerva or anything. So it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just, like, him being, like, overly proper, or... I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, you know, how, how you so. refer to the people around you. Because I always is... think of, uh, 
I always think of McGonagall as kind of being like, you know, his second in command, like the one of the basically the teacher like, because she becomes the deputy headmistress eventually. So it's like yes. like they're very close. And it's just it's odd to me that he doesn't call her by her first name. But uh, that's and, also that's you, also a thing that happens the early installment of witness, perhaps we'll have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> yeah. It's a thing that happens throughout the series where people will always call themselves like, "Oh, Malfoy did this," and "Oh, Potter does this." It's it's like it's usually done in kind of like a hostile way. Um, so I don't know if that's a British thing or if that's a common thing for anyone that I've just never picked up it's, on. Over here, it's very uncommon to refer to, or at least I, among what I've experienced <laughs> in my generation and my part of England that I live in, uh, you, I almost never hear people referring to other people by their surname. Um, unless you, unless there's like you know possibility for confusion between multiple people with the same first name, mm -hmm. in which case they would usually just say like you know Jack W or Jack B or something. Um, <laughs> that was a thing in <coughs> schools. Um, there was yeah, um... calling someone by their surname is odd. That said, I have heard a story of a, like I have known at least one person who told me of about how teachers at their school would refer to people that would uh, would refer to students by their surnames uh and i remember even at the time finding that odd because i'm like i've never experienced that so it might depend on the kind of school you're at where in england you are maybe I don't know. um this is obviously non-canon uh but uh, there was a <coughs> fanfic i read once where uh luna was confused by the fact that they would call Hagrid Hagrid when that's his last name, and she's like, "Isn't that rude?" Mm -hmm. and, and he's just like, "No, because I prefer that. I don't like my first name." And uh. I don't know. But uh, let's see what else I got. Um, Dumbledore being easily flattered because uh, she says that like he's the only one that uh, Voldemort ever feared, and like oh, there's something about like him being too noble to use. Yeah, he he says like, <laughs> what, what was the line? It was um, he has powers I had, could never have or something. Right, yeah, something like that. Um, because he, he so calls just, him Voldemort. McGonagall's like, oh, I don't feel comfortable with that. And he's like, eh, it's not a big deal. And she's like, easy for you to say. You're the only person that could stand up to him. And he's like, oh, shucks. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, gee. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, he, and then he's like, Voldemort has powers I could never. Hang on, let me find the exact page. So I wrote down here... Um, Dumbledore doesn't give McGonagall any sort of explanation as to why Harry survived, uh, most likely just to keep things simple for the reader. But uh, because he doesn't mm -hmm. say anything, this is kind of also implying now that McGonagall doesn't know anything about the uh, the prophecy or the... Uh, oh, yeah. The, I was wondering if, if the, who knows about it. <laughs> it might only be him, Snape, and uh, Trelawney. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, well, because it was Trelawney's mother that made the prophecy in the first place, right? No, it was Trelawney. Oh, Trelawney herself, I see. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the other thing is, uh, it's unclear how much they know about the, like, <coughs> the sacrificial love magic in general. Because mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I've seen people bring up, like, it's, it's so bizarre. Like, uh, is this literally the only time in history when a parent has ever, like... Right, yeah, you have to wonder how mysterious it is. <laughs> but um, apparently the circumstances that it worked are really specific. They're saying, like, I've read that basically it only worked because Voldemort gave her the option to live, and then she insisted anyway. I see. And that's it's, it's weird that, you would that think magic is that Voldemort specific. <laughs> like, well, no, because, like, is there just this unknown law of magic that, like... If you are about to die and given the option to live but choose to die anyway, then the person you're protecting will be like granted this magical like shield. Like it's so well, weird. <laughs> like that 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 calls into question what magic in this series even is because you do not need a wand to do it. You do not need incantations to do it. Those are just tools by which it becomes easier to manipulate those forces. Right. But it's I think it's implied to basically just be people manifesting their will into reality um <laughs> by just Yeah, cuz Harry does wandless magic <laughs> as a child. Um, yeah. You can just you can just want things to happen and it will magic will contrive it. Um so I've always thought it's it's really not that different from like psychic powers or something. So like, um, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it, it's a weird situation, and I'm sure we'll probably talk more about it later. But uh, 
Yeah. I was mainly just kind of curious if like basically she asks like how did how did Harry survive and he's just like we may never know. I was just I'm wondering to myself like you know does he is actually he know quiet? and he doesn't want to get into it or does he have a suspicion but isn't sure or is he like this yeah. definitely happened like my assumption is that um, he just has a suspicion but it's also very possible uh, that he's just being cl- oh oh you can't hear me can you no i can okay um, my assumption is that is that he's got a suspicion and isn't sure and doesn't want to say but it's also possible that he knows and he's just being coy because Dumbledore is like that. Right. <laughs> the fact that he knows to take Harry to a family member to like keep the protection alive implies that he knows some of the mechanics behind like what happened there. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. Dumbledore has a weird watch with planets on it that I don't think is ever mentioned again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, McGonagall says something about, like, this will be probably known as Harry Potter Day in the future. That never happens. Um mm-hmm. I'm also surprised that that isn't a thing in real life, unless it is, and I've just never heard of it, because we have, like, Towel Day. Oh, Towel Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see. This is not something I wrote down, but uh, the very last paragraph I noted as being very cinematic. Like, I can imagine the two of these characters just disappearing, and then you kind of have this, like, slow shot panning away from... Uh, Privet Drive do, is do, the do, 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 do. title card. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Um, only other things I really have written down here, um, I went into, here's my explanation of the freaking Bristol Surrey thing. Um, uh, Hagrid is just the best character. He's not my favorite <laughs> character, but he's he's so pure. Like, oh yeah, I love him. Hagrid, Hagrid really is the greatest, um, and I love the description of him being five times as wide as a normal man. Like he's just a, he's an absolute unit, basically. Um, yes. Um, the scene of him like you know leaning over to kiss Harry and then just like howling with Holy. sadness. Yeah, yeah, that was really like, sweet. I really like that characterization. You get the um, you get the kind of contrast there in the character. I mean, you know, gentle giant is a classic trope, but right. it's done well here. <clears throat> Um, let's see, do I have anything else here? Oh, of course, there's the early mention of Sirius Black, which uh, oh, is yeah, yeah. easy to look over, and then, like, the third book comes out, you find out all that stuff, and then you look back to the I first chapter, and it's Hagrid, like, oh, shit! How did, how did Hagrid borrow it from him while he was in prison? Did he just borrow it from him? He before? isn't he in prison, prison yet, because... Oh, yeah, he's on the run. Well, no, he's not even on the run yet. What happened now is, like, everybody assumes that he was the secret keeper, and, um... He, like, you know, he finds out what happened to the Potters. He goes to the house to, like, check on it, and he meets up with Hagrid there. And then mm-hmm. he, uh, Hagrid says, like, you know, he needs to get Harry out, and he borrows the bike. Like, I think they do explain that in the third book. Oh, um, okay. So, like, the whole thing with uh, him, like, meeting up with Peter Pettigrew and then, Whoa. like, blowing up the street, that doesn't happen for, like, another day or two. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't realize that that was... Oh no, yeah, I'm dumb. I'm like, I'm like, I thought he's been in prison for 13 years, but that's including these 11 when Harry, or 10 when Harry's growing up. And, right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah, at this point, uh, at this point, like, Sirius is not even suspected for anything until people start questioning, like, well, who was the secret keeper? How did Voldemort get to them? And then that whole thing mm. happens. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Like I said, I, I don't, re- I don't remember a lot of the, like, specific details of this. I remember, you know, plot threads and, like, right. the the arc of the story, but I'm not going to remember specific things like how this connects yep. up. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting to know that, though, as we continue with this. So, last couple things I have here. One of them is just, uh, you know, there's the whole scene of Dumbledore saying it's better for him to grow up with muggles because like, he'll be away from all of the, like, fame and stuff because he doesn't want to like we don't want to make him be raised in this world where like he's famous for something that he has no memory of and all that stuff, mm-hmm. which I agree with. Um, yeah. The thing I wanted to point out is um, I don't remember what it was, but something that the nostalgia critic made. He was complaining about how like in Harry Potter, like they raised this kid with this inflated ego from the start, saying you're the chosen one. We're all going to depend on That's you. Fun. And then people called him out on it, and he's like, "It's like, no, no, it totally happened. In the movie, Dumbledore says people will expect great things from him. And I'm like, yeah, but he's not saying that is a good thing. 
Like it's just I just love how massively he missed the point there. But yeah. uh, that's probably he didn't, he didn't get it. It's probably somebody who only watched the movies like once and isn't a huge fan, so that's whatever. But it's just kind of funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the last thing is uh, Dumbledore turning on his heel to disappear because that is a very common <laughs> that. a very common thing that happens in this series is people turning on their heel and dramatically leaving. And I think you actually do have to do that to apparate. I don't remember for certain, so that would make sense <laughs> if that's what he's doing. But the number of heel turns in this series is insane. Like, Not to be confused with face heel turns or heel face turns or revolving door of face heel turn or whatever it's called. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so we've been talking for almost an hour and a half. Uh, if you have any other God. stuff to talk about, that's fine. But I think we can wrap this up. I can't think of anything. Yeah, we. I'm hoping that uh, we... I don't know if we're going to do one chapter per video because if we have this Probably much to not. say about each other chapter it's going to take forever but a lot of this was kind of like like i mentioned at the stuff. beginning introduct mm -hmm, yeah uh, and talking about this the setting and the introduction of the characters the further we get we're going to have less to say about that and more to say about the specific events that happen in each chapter of course it's also dependent on the length of the chapters because they're not always uh consistent but yep so i'm i'm, we'll I'm expecting <laughs> let me let me look at what the chapters are for this i I'm guessing we can probably combine chapters two and three. Maybe not because of length, but just because of content, because those are the ones of, like, before Harry is kind of, like, before he knows he's a wizard, just, like, the early stuff. Sure. But we'll see how we want to split it up. Yeah, um, we'll play it by you. And that goes uh, with regards to the podcast, podca podcast and its format and stuff as well. Um <laughs> since, as I mentioned, we haven't done this before, but Indeed. hopefully it was still enjoyable uh, to listen to. And uh, if you have anything, to, uh, if you guys have anything to yeah, say any about the topics we've discussed, feel free to leave them in the comments. We may address some stuff next time, potentially. Yep. Any type um, of, any comments are welcome, whether it's uh, <clears throat> critiquing, uh, giving suggestions for other things to talk about, uh, opinions on yep. anything we did talk about, any of that stuff. Um, I uh, look forward to hopefully striking up some discussion. So I guess we'll be wrapping this one up then. I don't know how often we'll update these, but uh, I had fun with this, so I look forward to doing Me more. Too. And I will not end this video by saying, uh, as they say in the wizarding world, wizard on, because nobody says that. So we will instead have another closing, which will just be, like, I don't know, bacon sandwiches. Huh. Huh. <laughs>